What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Winner here, and welcome in to another edition, a Monday edition of MVP Games Live right here on either Twitch, or you might be watching us on YouTube. I don't think you're going to watch us on, uh, what is it, Tubi? Is that what you watched uh, Friday Night Smackdown on the one-time soaps? Is that what is what? that what that app was called? Oh, Tubi. Yeah, uh, yeah we're not Tubi or Tubi or something. We're like not that. on Tubi. You're probably watching us on Twitch or you're watching us on YouTube. I am joined with my uh, beautiful co-host who is not in deep thought today, so he actually decided to show up to the show. Soapy Muffin, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, obviously that deep thought really helped me. Uh, my voice is uh, much much better now. Dude, your voice is much better. Your fantasy team and uh, fantasy basketball. You got the uh, the big brain team because you were in so much deep thought on Friday <laughs> night that it just allowed you to draft a good team as well. The joke is Soapy didn't show yep. up to the draft either. That That's the joke for those of you who don't know. Uh, Soapy was in that yeah, much deep thought. I never need to worry about a center because I at least have like six <laughs> players who can play center, all right? Soapy, Soapy's going to demand all the rebounds. All the rebounds, all the blocks are going Soap's way, but... No, uh, I don't like rebounds. <laughs> we're back for another edition of MVP Games Live. Uh, like we said last week, so this is going to become a kind of weekly thing. Usually it's Mold Breaker Monday. That gets pushed to Trend Setting Tuesday now because we had a Deep Thought Friday. So when we have a Deep Thought Friday, we got to move Mold Breaker Monday. It becomes a Trend Setting Tuesday. And you're probably confused like, Ricky, what the fuck are you talking about? Basically, Mold Breaker Monday is getting moved to Tuesday for this week because, Soapy, we got a lot to talk about. We got Games Award stuff that you and I haven't given our opinions on yet. We have cyberpunk criticisms, a ton of stuff in shorty but a goodie but before we get into everything before actually fuck it this will start the housekeeping the first thing for housekeeping soapy you got to give people another example of this because uh you're no longer on your phone the mvp laptop that we are sending to you finally got sent to you and now you're on a laptop so uh people might be hearing you a little bit crisper now yeah, hi, dude. Sometimes it be sometimes it be crispy. Sometimes I don't be crispy, but <laughs> right now I be crispy. KFC, you're the original crispy, my guy. You're you're, yeah. you're the original crispy. Like like a great Barney Stinson once said, "You don't mess with original recipe, my guy. You don't mess with original recipe." But uh, yeah, Soapy has got the laptop. He's gonna be sounding a lot more crisper. The other. Same things for the housekeeping. If you haven't joined the best community on the internet, join the MVP Discord today. Link is down below on YouTube or exclamation Discord. Soapy already did it. Click that link in the uh, Twitch chat in order to get in on that great community, the best community, like I said, in all the universe. If you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids is how you go ahead and do that. Again, click the link in Twitch chat because Soapy's a great guy. He did exclamation Patreon and Twitch chat to get you that link. If you're on YouTube, it's down below in the, in the description. I uh, also thank you to Pat Hill and Philly Sean, our Patreon sponsors. And then last but not least, we're on Twitch every Monday through Friday. Twitch.tv backslash MVP vids, or I should say for Games Live, we're on Twitch every Monday through Friday. Asterix, unless one of us is in deep thought. Um, and we're also on YouTube at MVP Entertainment. So go ahead, like, sub and follow us at both places. But Soapy, we got a jam-packed show today. Some of this See, is... Yeah, I just want to chime in for a second. Go ahead. I had to open that window. There's a whole lot of shade in here right now. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, you're talking to me. Lot. I get it. I get it. At first, I'm like, why is he opening his window? It was almost going over the head, Soapy. But then I took my other hand and I caught it. So it didn't go completely over my head there. But yeah, I, I am throwing a lot of shade at you. I, I should probably... Tone it back a little bit. Tone it back. <laughs> but I'm sorry, you know, I need my beauty deep thought. Oh, that was I'm sorry. Fuck, that was fucking beautiful. The little throw in there. Fucking beautiful. But we're talking game awards. People are probably like, you guys should have talked about this on Friday, but yeah, I've harped on it enough. It is what it is. Um, so we're talking about it today. And the big thing people are discussing is The Last of Us. How the hell did it win game of the year? There's a lot of people that don't believe the Last of Us Part Two should have been Game of the Year. There are people, and I know Co- uh, Soapy was in this ca- uh, camp. Ghost of Tsushima probably should have won it. Soapy's also in the camp of how the fuck did Doom Eternal not walk away with a single GD Game Award? Um, but then you're also got people in my camp that are like Hades 
should have been game of the year with everything that we've heard so great about that game. And it's interesting to see what opinions for different people are. But Soapy, I'm going to ask you to start the conversation, to get the ball rolling. Did Last of Us Part Two really deserve to be the game of the year for the Game Awards 2020? I don't think it deserved to be the game of the year, and it's simply because it wasn't the best game of the year. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, I will like I will shit talk the story up and down the side of a mountain. Yeah, for Last of Us Two, but like I'll say, what it did good, it did it did well with. What did it do good? Voice acting is something that it was really good with. I know some people kind of harped on it of where like um the one video that I put in the uh gaming chat mm-hmm. or in the gaming channel for in the Discord. That the guy laughed when he saw that there was two people for Last of Us, and it's like those are also two really good voice actors, though. So yeah, like they kind of get a pass. Like they have really good voice acting. The action scenes when they were there, it was fine. They made improvements to the gameplay, not substantial ones. Not like oh my god, like this is improving mm-hmm. on the system so much. It's like if you play Last of Us Part One, you already know how the game plays. Yeah. And I will say, like, the music is good. The only thing is, like, some of the awards it won, I was kind of like, eh, should it have won? Mm-hmm. Like, should it really have won Best Music? When, oh, I don't know, you have Final Fantasy music. You have Doom Eternal's entire soundtrack that everyone loves. Mm-hmm. And you just have, like, one sad boy song in Last of Us 2. And I was like, oh, dude, I, I love it. But dude, oh, Eddie, but Eddie Vedder, or not Eddie Vedder? Was it Eddie Vedder? Yeah, Eddie Vedder fucking played it at the Game Awards, man. He played oh, on his wow. own banjo. And dude, I, I can't believe it. <clears throat> it's almost like Doom's eternal entire soundtrack is better than that song. Yeah, and what? I never said that. The thing that I've been thinking about because I've had time since we watched the Game Awards on Thursday to obviously think about this is I. <clears throat> My first thought was, is this what we talk about all the time in the in the sports region? Where basically for sports, and Dave has brought this up, I've brought this up, of fan is short for fanatic. Where when you think about how a fan thinks, that's like usually when you hear me talk about the Bulls, I do get into, like, I'll, I'll be honest, there are some Bulls discussion where I go into fan mode, where the analytical like the more analyst part of my brain gets twisted and it's just like full-blown fan nothing my team can do is wrong i'm gonna defend my guys till the day i die uh kind of mentality and i feel like in the gaming world i'm starting to think of like was this game just because it wasn't received well by the fans does this game automatically mean it shouldn't be game of the year for the game boards? Because um, I watched the kind of funny uh, games daily show where they talked about this on Friday. Cause I wanted to hear their thoughts because they actually get to judge. They're actually one of the judges for the game awards. And uh, Greg did a great job of kind of going in how it works. If you're unfamiliar, what goes on for the game awards? Cause I didn't know all the ins and outs is basically, for example, Soapy, I'm going to use it for us. Let's say we were judges for the game awards and kind of funny kind of does the same thing that we would do where since there's two of us, Jeff Keeley would send out the email. Hey, it's time to uh, nominate games. What are your guys nominations for game of the year? Basically, I would tell you, hey, Soapy, come up with your five nominations. I would come up with my five nominations Whichever five got the most votes between the two of us, those would be MVP's five nominations. And then Keeley takes those from all the different uh, outlets and does the same thing. Who got the, who were the top five most vote getters for that kind of, uh, for that category. And just because the critics think one, like just because the critics think one way, because obviously if, uh, the Last of Us Part Two won Game of the Year because it is a ninety percent weight on the judges and a ten percent weight on the fans. Should the critics like? Should we bash the judges and critics for thinking differently? Should we bash them for going different? Because 
the ghost if you're like oh man ghost of tushima should should have won that's what the uh, fans voted for yeah they 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 did that's why they got the player's choice like that's another side all to itself is how important is the fan vote in the game of the year if you're just going to give ghost of tushima who won the fan vote if you're just going to give them a trophy on their own Is it kind of like having two game of the years? This is what the fans game of the year is. This is what the judges game of the year is. And for me, I kind of look at it and I go, well, I see maybe the judges, they're supposed to take it back and not look at it as a fan. They are supposed to play the game and kind of look at it of all the angles, kind of angles that a fan wouldn't think of. And to me, I'll ask you, Soapy, is... Do you think that, I know we talked about in the Discord with uh, other uh, people that were in it, we had a couple of us talking about it, should the fan vote be weighted more, or should the Game Awards go, okay, fuck it, Game of the Year is going to be for the judges, player choice is going to be for the fans? I think it really depends on the direction you want to go with. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things that I think you could also just have it to like, hey, this is the player's Game of the Year. Mm Mm-hmm. Or then you can have it, oh, this is the critics game of the year. Like, I think it's one of those things, if you take that approach, cool. You mm-hmm. fix the main problem of, like, critics and players not seeing head-to-head. Because, for instance, Last of Us 2 is one of those games, and I will say it to the day I die. Yeah. That is one of the most polarizing games that has ever been released in my lifetime. Because mm-hmm. that game has, ro- like, roaring high critic reviews, mm-hmm. but has some of the lowest player reviews. Yeah. Like, that's one of those games of, like, Critically, it did well. Mm-hmm. Review wise, eh, like it was, it was there. It does, participated. Does a game of the year need to have high rated critic value and high rated fan va- like player value? Like, because to me, I look at it and I go, I look at the players and I just I look at it and I go, how many of you? Because it's the fan vote. How many of you are doing like? How do I want to phrase this? How many of their thoughts are more emotionally driven where, I'm going to be honest, the judges, when I look at, okay, here's a judges panel. These are supposed to be critics and people in the industry. I kind of think most of them are thinking, okay, I got to think with my brain and everything I've uh, kind of experienced with gaming rather than my heart on this one. Yeah, and I mean, and obviously that's the ideal world that you want to be in, but the ideal world isn't ideal. It's Mm -hmm. not, like, for instance, we have seen, and I personally believe the theory that there are reviewers who get paid off. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, we've seen times that IGN gave games great reviews. The game sucked, and, like, it was universally bad. Like, we've seen of where people will give high raving reviews for games that are awful, and it's one of those things that, like, I'm not saying every reviewer does it. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, Angry Joe does it. Because, like, Angry mm-hmm. Joe is really, at this point, the only reviewer I even trust anymore. Yeah. Because I've been burned so many times by critics and reviewers. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of those things that I view it as I don't think a game needs to be seen well by both. Mm-hmm. Personally, for me, I would say, like, yeah, critics can say the game's bad, but if more people have fun with the game, yeah, rather than, like, just having fun but like rather than just the critics being like this is a good game mm-hmm. you're supposed to like it and if everyone's like this game sucks we don't like it like i don't think the game that like critics are like 100 percent, get in there get in there like you're gonna love it and everyone's like no stop we don't want to play this mm-hmm. when people like if i have to if people view a game like that mm-hmm. that's where i think like it should have been nominated it shouldn't have won yeah of where you have games like Hades, like you brought up. Mm-hmm. A lot of people loved it. Critics loved it. Like, I'm going to point out, like, there is the trend of games that critics love and fans love are the ones that a lot of people wanted it to win. Mm-hmm. Tsushima, heavily praised on release by everybody. Critics, reviewers, people outside the gaming industry were like, wow, that looks like a really good game. Fans loved it. Doom was praised by everybody. Well, Side critics, but critics can go fuck off at this point. 
Because <laughs> literally everyone loves Doom beside critics, and they're like, this game bad. Well, and then I saw one review they did of where it was uh, someone said Doom's the greatest shooter of all time. And I'm like, respect you now. I want to interject because the one thing that, and I'm seeing it, and I'm getting what I was going to say from Twitch chat too, is because you got like Mad Rogue mentioning how uh, basically I think there's a strong chance uh, there was going to be pushback on a game because the internet as a whole is never going to be happy. Um, with a complete win or loss. And then JD kind of talking about what you are, um, Soapy, that that is 100% a thing because if they bash the game, they won't get early access to it. I feel like, though, the gaming sphere and everything has changed to where the IGN, the old model of IGN that was even there with G4 TV of IGN gets an early copy, they play it, they do a review... That's now out, out, like out the window because the internet is now a thing. YouTube and game reviewers on YouTube, credited game reviewers on YouTube, like kind of funny, a- Angry Joe's reviews. Uh, I'm trying to think of other game. Like to me, those are the really the only two that I gravitate towards because let's be honest, you're going to find your two that you like and that's what you go to. Reason why... I've always liked the kind of funny reviews and stuff that I don't want spoiled is in their podcasts or used to the last one I listened to, they don't give a score ranking. Like it's not like a three out of five at the end because theirs is more of like, Hey, we're just going to talk about the game, what we like, what we don't like, because people have different thoughts. People have different likes and dislikes when it comes to games. How many times have we talked? And we have seen something to where it's like, I'd be like, fuck, that looks like a great game. And it might be one where you or Dave go, yeah, it looks good. Not a game for me, though. Like, every game isn't going to appeal to everybody. But going off that, I feel like because everything has changed and the YouTube uh, part of the equation is now heavier than ever, I feel like the reason why fans think that their vote should count more is because like, for example, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, kind of funny. For example, they call their fans the best friends where if you're a fan of them, you're a best friend of kind of funny. That's just kind of their community building thing. And if you're going to do something like that and be even on the side of where you're a YouTube, uh, your YouTube channel, but then you're a judge for the game awards people who are in the fan part or the players are going to feel a connection. Like, Hey, he's just like me. Like he's just like me. That makes my opinion feel just as valued, but is it just as valued? If it's only being weighted 10% to 90%. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the fix. I know in the discord, Soapy, you said that you would make it more of like a, maybe a 60, 40 or a 50, 50. I don't even know. If that is a fix, like to me, I don't know if that's what you do. I don't know if it's the split up to where, oh, the players get the player's choice. The judges get the uh, game awards game of the year. And let's be honest, like at the end of the day, does it even fucking matter who won this award? At the end of the day, does it matter? Does just because Last of Us Part 2 won this award does that ever take away from Hades being a good game? Does it take away from Ghost of Tsushima's being a good game? Does it take away from fucking Animal Crossing being a good game? No, it doesn't. Like, part of me, I feel like it, it's also the whole thing of the award show in general of, at the end of the day, how important are award shows? How important yeah, are yeah. they? Yeah, and I, I fully agree with you on that. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's one of those things I would change the way it's weighted because mm-hmm. I think it's one of those things. And I think, I think I said my piece on why I think it should be more like a 60, 40 in that range of where it's go ahead for like, people who might not have been yeah. in the discord. Why you think 60, okay. 40 is the way to go. Yeah. The reason I was saying that is like, yes, it is incredibly valuable. What mm-hmm. critics believe in a game, because it's yeah. one of the things they have to look at as impartial. Mm-hmm. But once again, they make up such a small number of the community yeah. of why do they have such a vast majority of what's said 
of where if most fans are saying that shouldn't win, this should win. Like, mm-hmm. that's the way I view it. Of like, I respect the opinion of a lot of reviewers, like mm-hmm. the people that obviously, you know, aren't just licking the boot of the company. Like, please give me the next game you guys make. Uh, you you make me laugh because the CM Punk thing I uh, watched today on Renee uh, Young's podcast is uh, he mentioned bootlicking. He goes, there's a ton of bootlickers out there, but they forget you're supposed to be a bootlicker, not a boot eater. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I think it's one of those things that, like I said, it, their opinion is incredibly valuable, mm-hmm. but it should once again not just be like, oh, fans get swept to the side because these people matter more. Yeah. That's picking favorites. Mm-hmm. Like that's a, like it's one of those things that the players name like the players matter. Mm-hmm. I think players matter matter more than critics. I still have it being sixty percent towards reviewers because once mm-hmm. again, they don't have like they're not supposed to have the like emotional attachment of like a lot of people hated Last of Us Part Two before it even came out mm-hmm. because you know the spoilers got leaked. People actively looked them up, saw stuff without context, and hated it. Yeah, and just never gave it a chance. You know, there's people like that. Mm-hmm. But then I think it's one of those things that viewing it as a, like, a, oh, it's fair that it's 90 10. It's like, so the millions of people who played the game don't matter as much as like 50 people or like 50, like, well, like I'll say organizations. And that just goes you know, into the, uh, the whole thing too of like, it's an award show. And really, yet again, like, the old adage is you tune into an award show like the the Academy Awards or something. It's the fucking, what is it? The Actors like Guild or whatever. The like Oscar committee. They're the ones yeah. that vote on it. To where it's like, it ain't fans voting on that. Like, should an, award, should an award process be to where it's like, well, yeah, it should be the fucking judges and people who are actually in the industry that have a more weighted vote than the fans if fan engagement is all. I'm not saying the fan engagement should bring should be pushed out. Gaming is very like different than the movie scene, but like that even brings that up to it to where it's like I said, fans are fanatics. They're going to we are going to go off of emotion as fans. Should that really be should the emotional pick really be weighted more than what should be the well thought out judged uh, critic uh, pick from the industry. Well, I mean, and yeah. And the first point that I was going to make was to respond to the, like the actors guild and everything. The only thing is it has been like that for like 200 years mm-hmm. and shit like that. Like the actors yeah. guild has been around for like the dawn of time. Like when mm-hmm. the earth was created, the actors guild was there. Yeah. But it's one of those things that with that, those people look at movies analytically. Mm-hmm. You can look at a movie analytically because it's telling a story. This is what it is. And they look at everything within the movie. Mm-hmm. With video games, it's harder to do that because like for certain video games, like obviously Doom being any any of these fucking nominations, that game's not supposed to listen to the motion. That's supposed to just be, I feel cool as fuck playing this game. Yeah. But like, for instance, a game where like a player death happens a game where something like this is supposed to happen, it elicits emotion. Critics are going to view it as like, oh, okay, I can kind of separate myself from that. While players, like, we're the ones who are meant to feel that. We're supposed to feel it in mass. Mm-hmm. Obviously, still dancing around spoilers because uh, someone still hasn't played the game. <clears throat> there is stuff that happens in Last of Us Part Two that divided fan bases. Obviously, I'm not going to say my piece on it because God fucking forbid. And not, I think it's one of those- not even gonna lie to you at this point. It'll get done when it gets done. <laughs> yeah, next year when I'm still dancing around spoilers. Oh. But like, it's one of those things that, like, I don't think like because with the way that I had the sixty forty, I still do have the sixty percent being critics because they have to look at analytically. Mm-hmm. But once again, I think major companies shouldn't have a say in it. Like, if I'm being brutally honest, I don't think Sony or Nintendo should have a say in it. And it's simply because what is stopping them from being biased and picking their own game? Yeah. Because for instance, obviously Sony had multiple ponies in this race. Like obviously Tsushima, like the smaller of the two, Mm -hmm. but like two broke a lot of sales records. What was stopping Sony from being like that game of the year? Well, and I mean, like 
really the only thing, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I want to throw this out there, is even to go back to the people that are like the, oh, Naughty Dog paid people uh, to yeah, give them... Fucking dumb. Well, I mean, so if you asked me, do I believe that stuff may be happening... Part of me would say, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because like since the dawn of time, if you can grease the wheel to get yourself a award, people are going to do it. Um, but at the same time, I look at it and I go for those people, I even just question I'm like, but what does that do for Naughty Dog and Last of Us? Like, does it really matter that it won game of the year besides the fact that yeah. now that one game of the year, they can come out two years later and come out with a game of the year edition. Like well, what? The only but thing is besides that, game like, of the year edition really to Naughty Dog. Uh, that adds Good prestige point. to Naughty Dog. Good point. Uh, where Naughty Dog can say, Hey, look how many game of the year awards we have. We have last of us mm-hmm. one and two to where then when three comes out, obviously the fans are going to be more jaded. Like, okay, mm-hmm. we saw what you did with two. We're fucking skeptical now, but someone who's just getting into the gaming industry who sees, Hey, this series won two of these bad boys in a row. Mm-hmm. When the games came out, that adds prestige to the company. Or, for instance, I think a company like Sucker Punch would have needed it more. Obviously, I'm not saying, like, oh, give it to the company that needs it most. But it's one of those things, like, obviously, I think Sucker Punch has put out other exclusives that have been good, but, like, I just view it as, like, obviously, like, people who are already, like, engrossed in gaming, we know what companies are good, we know what companies are bad. Yeah. I I, And that's the thing I was just going to throw out there. Uh, at the end of the day, do you think players and consumers, is it back to the old days of like, oh man, look at how many uh, awards this company has won. They make great games. No, fucking, we know what we like as a, as a player to where like, if we see the trailer, we're going to know whether we like it or not. It's not going to be something of, oh man, Naughty Dog has put out, uh, has won this many awards. It's more so of, Oh, I really liked that last game they put out. I'm going to play their next one. So, like, yet again, does the award even matter? Well, yeah, and the whole thing is, like, once again, like like I said, you know, establish people who have been gaming for a while. We know who makes good games and we know who doesn't. We know Bioware's on the decline, so you always have to be skeptical with them. Mm-hmm. We know Blizzard has made questionable choices. We know Nintendo just puts mm-hmm. out the same fucking game every year. Sorry, I had to slip in my Nintendo shit talk somewhere. <laughs> We know Activision just rushes through their games. We know CD Projekt Red mm-hmm. games launch buggy as fuck, but they still come yeah. like they end up being good by the end. Mm-hmm. We we know the patterns. The only thing is for someone who's just getting into gaming mm-hmm. or someone who may not know that pattern, they may see like, oh, hey, this company has won this many awards. They have to be a good company, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's what it does. It adds prestige to the company. Like obviously the players, we know. But people who are more casual, they may not know that. So they're like, oh, okay, cool. When Naughty Dog makes a game, I'll buy it. Like, people will just not instinctively at that point follow with what they do. Yeah. Because it's like, for instance, when you see movies from, I'm trying to think of like movie studios, like Warner Brothers. Obviously, I know Warner Brothers probably has a lot of fucking misses in their book. New Line but Cinema, like, um, Lionsgate, like stuff like that. Like Paramount and stuff like that. Paramount. Yeah. Like the really, the really big ones. Like, when they get awards, that adds prestige, because then now people who don't know movies, like me, Mm -hmm. if I see, oh, Paramount made this movie, I'm like, oh, they make Godfather. Or they they have something to do with Godfather. I guess you're right. I mean, I don't know. I just look at it and I go, to me, the Game Awards, and I thought about this today. If it wasn't for all the announcements, which we're going to get into next, not all of them, just some of the ones we like if it wasn't for all the announcements or the possible announcements we'd be seeing, I wouldn't have fucking watched like that. Like that's the thing that draws me to the game awards is like me, you and Dave were watching it. And I can't remember what one of us, I think it was Dave that said it was, it's kind of like a mini E three where it was like, it was so well paced too, in my mind, because it was like, boom, 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 premiere, 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 premiere. Let's go, go, go announce, announce, announce. And, like, that's what draws me to the Game Awards. What game is going to win what award? Yeah, I know we did a prediction show on it, but that's just because we're going to watch the show and we have played these games and have talked about these games. I know, the asterisks. There's an asterisk for some of them, I know. 
Um, one of us didn't. Uh, one of us still hasn't played the game, even though they own it. Should I just boot it up right now, and instead of a show, we'll just watch me play The Last of Us? Is that you may as well. This point? That's gonna be the most I'm gonna get of the fucking Last of Us content. <laughs> uh, MVP Games Live turns into Ricky and Soapy play The Last of Us. Well, Ricky plays The Last of Us. Soapy judges him while he plays The Last of Us. Uh, yeah. But like back to what I was saying, I'm like without the uh, without all the announcements, I probably wouldn't watch it. So like at the end of the day, does it matter? Yet again, going back to the point of does it matter that it won? I may lean towards no, it doesn't fucking matter in my mind that it won game of the year because it doesn't take away from anything and it doesn't add anything in my mind. Yeah, and like I don't think it matters at one either like obviously it makes naughty dog look mm-hmm. a better company which they are deep down i will say that a lot of people need to understand mm-hmm. yes last of us 2 was polarizing they still have other good games they've made yeah i've seen people be like naughty dogs never made a good fucking game and i'm like okay that's a lie crash fucking bandicoot yeah crash bandicoot the uncharted series granted uncharted 4 is a little eh, well, eh. Mm-hmm. but like for instance you know like they have crash bandicoot Last of Us 1, Uncharted 1 through 3, like, they have good games. It's I think it's something that, and obviously we could probably talk about this tomorrow, mm-hmm. of, like, does one bad game ruin a company? Because no. a lot of people act like it does. I mean, looking at games that they have made, Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot 2, Crash Bandicoot Warped, the, enti- the Jack and Daxter series, fucking great series, the Uncharted series, uh last of us one at least last of us one was good um yeah so like maybe that like maybe that's a discussion too i think tomorrow's discussion is going to go around i've got something but it's only because of how long we've spent on this topic alone um because i do want to move into the other stuff and like with the game awards just to put a kibosh on it soapy just kind of talking about some of the game announcements me we liked I have a question for you because you are the Mass Effect guy. So at the very end of the show, we got a uh, we got a trailer for or a teaser, I should say, for Mass Effect, the next game that is coming out. Um, And like IGN puts here above their trailer, it's confirmed the Mass Effect series will continue. And it looks like maybe Liara to Sony plays a role in the next sci-fi adventure. Uh, we patiently await more information for me being a outsider to mass effect. Is it wrong for me to look at this and go, I don't get the fucking deal with this. Is it because, uh, is it because of who we saw in the trailer? Because for me, the whole thing afterwards, and I had this, uh, opinion to you of like, yeah, we knew this game was coming. Like, this would have hit more if it was like a didn't know anything, and then it was like, boom, Mass Effect. Your thoughts on it being the Mass Effect guy? Uh, I mean, I I view it as a very, like, jaded fan, mostly because I hated Andromeda. Andromeda. Yeah. I have also seen that Naughty... Or not Naughty Dog. Sorry, I'm so used to shit-talking Naughty Dog Bethesda. at this point. No. No, it's Bioware. Bioware. I was going to get to it eventually. Yeah. But Bioware has been on a slippery slope for a while here because mm-hmm. Anthem came out, sucked. Obviously, yeah. it's gotten better. Yeah. You know, I don't want, I don't want to slander it in case Dave's around. Mm-hmm. And then they made Andromeda. Like, that's... Or, I think they made Andromeda and then Anthem. Like, that's two bad games back and back to back. Mm-hmm. They're owned by EA, so they'd have nowhere near as much time to make games as they did before. Yeah. And, like, their game's quality has slowly gone down over time. It's one of those things that, like and I'll even bring it up with a game that I'll bring up later, I'm skeptical as fuck about it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what Bioware I'm going to get. Am I going to get good Bioware from like early 2000s with like Bioshock 1 and 2 and like the original Mass Effect games? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Or am I about to get the Mass Effect Andromeda, Anthem, like Bioshock Infinite even, of like, they're okay. Not good, but they're like, okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was just thinking, though, like, was was this teaser an impactful one? Because, like, to me, yet again, someone who has not played the Mass Effect games, I'm not a Mass Effector, 
Um, I just looked at it and I was like, yeah, we knew this was coming. Like, yeah, I think it's more or less of like the thing that's the big impact is we're seeing that they are probably they're probably going to focus on Liara in this one. Mm-hmm. And like Mad Rogue says, he said, I mean, uh, Liara is probably the one squad mate with the biggest impact on the world. Yeah. So it's obviously they're not taking the Andromeda approach of just making shit up as they go. Mm hmm. Like they're probably going more into like the established world that we kind of already know, like from like the first three games. Yeah. Of where it's like, oh, like they're probably not going to have Shepard in it, Mm -hmm. but they're probably going to have you choose between like Liara and like another person because they've always had it where you can choose a guy or a girl. Yeah. So Liara will probably be the female character and then whoever they decide to have as the male will be the male character. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Whoop. Didn't know my sound was on. What's another announcement that you were all excited about? Dude, it's it's the one that I saw and my fucking jaw dropped the second I saw who made it. Yeah. The Kalisto pro- Protocol. Okay. Mostly because it's made by the people who made Dead Space. Yeah. And I fucking love Dead Space. Because that was the one of where it was, um, of where like we were like, what the fuck is this trailer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then like, after was, they talked about it and they mentioned Dead Space. Yeah, because that's when I was like, oh, I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I already love this game now. Mm-hmm. Like, that's one of the things of where, especially because uh, I looked it up, the game's not coming out till like 2022. Yeah. So 2021 going to be when we start actually learning about it. When they were talking about it, it did not feel like this game was going to come out anytime soon. Yeah. Well, especially because, I mean, obviously, I the game's probably going to be called the Callisto protocol. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things that, you know, I think it's, this is the way to build the pipe of where at this point, like the only thing we know is like, we saw general concept, like there's robots, people and whatever the fuck that one thing in the cage with the guy was <laughs> of where yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. So this is like dead space, but now robot dead mm-hmm. space. Cool. But yeah. Like that, that was the game I was super excited for. Because I know you were also excited about Arc Two, right? With Vin Diesel, the yeah, the, the, dude, the, the new so the new tribal chief. He's he's our real tribal yeah. chief. Sorry, Roman, you are no longer the head of the table. Vin Diesel is the new head of the table. Yeah, and just the other game I was excited for mm-hmm. was Dragon Age, and that's okay. mostly because they basically just showed that we're getting the cast of Inquisition again. <laughs> yeah, because I really like the Inquisition, but mm-hmm. once again, I don't know what Bioware I'm getting. Yeah, I mean. For me though, you know, you know which one I was most excited for, Selby. I think you I can have Fall a guess. What? It was Fall Guys one? So Fall Guys, that was probably my number two because season three is coming out. Um, I, I know which actual one. It's the perfect dark one. It's the perfect dark one. That's the one that made me pop. Like holy shit! Like not even the fact because yet again, and this goes into the side of like I know I bashed Mass Effect for the well, we knew it was coming out. This trailer for Perfect Dark gave me more than the Mass Effect trailer did. And I knew Perfect Dark was coming. You and I talked about, oh, they teased it. It it may be coming. I just didn't expect it to come now. And with how much they showed about the world and how cool it looks and kind of like with the the drone uh, stuff with it, I am so pumped for this game. I can't wait for it. And I don't even know what the gameplay is like yet. I'm so pumped for it. It's like a fry. It's almost like a fry from Futurama of like, just take my money. Just take it now. Sure, uh, take my just money. Wanna, just take it. Don't ask anything. Um, the only thing I'm wishing is I'm wishing that it's not an Xbox exclusive. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Otherwise I gotta get an Xbox series S because I'm not going to play it on the just computer. Get it on PC, dog, I'm it'll be not going to play it on computer. I have my computers for two, one game and one game only soapy. And that's world of Warcraft. Yeah, I mean, dude, hell, so, soapy, just get a soapy, control si- soapy, silently judging me there before he came back in. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, because it's almost like that game's uh, like the one fucking reason you won't play the uh, Last of Us. Yeah, it does take up a lot of my time. You're right; it's a very time-consuming yeah. game. So, yeah, you know, just plug your PlayStation controller in. Realize why PlayStation control PlayStation controllers are bad for PC. Yeah, but I don't need to. I don't need to use it on my computer. I don't need to use my PlayStation controller on a computer. 
Well, yeah, when you play Perfect Dark on it, because you're not you're going to be waiting for fucking ever to get an Xbox. Oh, I hey, good point. I may not even get a PS5 by that time, let alone a fucking yeah Xbox Series X. Um, yeah, I mean the other thing that was cool was the Evil Dead game that kind of looked like I was like, wait, didn't they kill the fr- the Friday the Thirteenth game? And then boom, we saw the uh, the uh, Evil Dead the game because Ash came out. That one looked fucking dope, but, like, besides that, there were a lot of, like, little games. They were like, okay, that's cool. Ark looked cool. Um, I'm trying to think. The the only one that got me to go, like, eh, was, like, the indie game called Seasons that uh, all three of us were like, okay, what the fuck is that game about? Um, also, Open Roads, which was the one with, like, the daughter and the mother with, the, like, the cartoony style uh, that almost reminded me of, uh, fuck, what's it called? Um, shoot. It's like you're a fire ranger in Oregon. Oh, Uh, Firewatch. Firewatch, that's what it's called. Thank you. It almost reminded me of that style of game. Or art style of game, I should say. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if it's like that. It'll probably try to tell, like, not like a similar story to Firewatch, because obviously Mm -hmm. Firewatch is a completely different story. Yeah. Like, it'll probably be, like, the same type of thing. Oh, yeah, and like Bandro brought out uh, the Freddy. smash him up announcement. Yeah. Uh, Sephiroth basically right. almost murdered Mario. Can uh, I just point out, dude, why is it in every trailer Mario is the one who just gets his shit kicked in? Because he's the top dog, man. When you're the top dog, he's everyone's going to go after you. He's not even the most popular character in the he, game, and that's he, sad. He's, he's the top dog. He's the mascot. Uh, the thing I liked was uh, the meme that I'm seeing going around Facebook and Twitter of uh, Nintendo presenting. It's like, we're we're pleased to announce we are going to announce a new Smash character from Square Enix. And it's just Sora like, yeah. And his name starts with an S. Yeah. And he is the most popular character from the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Yeah. And it's like the banner gets pulled and it's like Sephiroth. <laughs> to where it's like, oh, we're never going to fucking get Sora in Kingdom Hearts. I feel like, yet again, am I excited for Sephiroth? Fuck yeah. It's even more exciting that Cloud gets his own final smash. I didn't even notice this. Uh, Philly Sean, uh, Demon, whatever you want to refer to him as. I think Sean's his name in Twitch now because he changed it. But uh, even he had to tell me that the Cloud gets his own final smash now for Sephiroth just when he's going up against Sephiroth, which is fucking dope. Continuity shit and stuff like that. But like, yeah. There were good announcements during the uh, the game awards, and before we kind of move on, because we got to get some shorties in this show, Soapy. Any final game awards announcements? You're like, you know what? We got to touch this because we didn't give love to it. Uh, we basically hit on all the ones that I wanted to. Okay. Uh, first thing for shorty, but a good. So here's the thing: we were gonna talk cyberpunk, but here's what I here's what I want to do. I want to do that for if it's okay with you. Do you want to do something like what I'm thinking is cyberpunk bugs and everything going on with that? And then kind of a topic of do, do fans kind of rush games at times for trend setting Tuesday, hashtag formally mold breaker Monday, um, and kind of push cyberpunk to tomorrow. I mean, yeah, we can do that. It's fine with me. It doesn't really matter. Just because we're at 40 minutes, like 43 minutes for the show, we do have a lot of shorties, but goodies uh, to get to. And the shorties, we don't want we don't want all the shorties kind of uh, getting piled up here in the background. So we'll do that um, for tomorrow. The first one, though, Soapy, I'm going to let you take this away. I'm going to introduce it. But then you give the most of the thoughts because you are the Xbox person is Polygon has the article Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Users will be able to play games via the cloud on their Apple iOS devices come spring 2021. Microsoft announced on Wednesday, the service was previously available on mobile for Android devices only. Microsoft said the service will be available on Apple iOS through the mobile web browser, circumventing the need for the App Store. Uh, Previously, Apple said cloud-based gaming services like Project X Cloud would be required to link individual games for purchase from their own App Store pages, something Microsoft called a bad experience for customers. 
Apple opened up its operating system to game streaming, uh, although with major hurdles in September. Uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate will be available for Windows or also be available for Windows PC via Xbox app and browser, according to a post on Xbox Wire. Sobi, what's your thought on this? How how much of a positive is this for Xbox that the Game Pass Ultimate is now coming to iOS? I mean, it's just it's just cool for people in general. Like it doesn't really benefit Xbox. You just more people get to play games on Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Microsoft makes more money. They can finally on uh, tell Bethesda to fuck off and get a new engine. Uh, not Bethesda. Oh, you're talking about Xbox can tell Bethesda. Yeah. I thought you were throwing a uh, throwing a jab at your favorite game company, Soapy. Oh, I mean, I do like Bethesda. It's more or less of like Bethesda. Please, at this point, I'm, I'm, this has absolutely nothing to do with the iOS thing. Your, your other fa- your, your other favorite game company that uh. It just brought Master Chief to uh, one of its games. Yeah, dude, fuck Epic. <laughs> That's what I thought and you were going even, with. It's not even, and it's not even because of the Master Chief thing. I, I could care less. Mm-hmm. I've seen now that I've seen Kratos fucking Fortnite dance on someone. I'm fine with seeing Master Chief Fortnite dance on somebody. Yeah, but you know, it's just it's one of those things that iOS having it it's cool doesn't mm-hmm. really affect me. I don't really yeah. have an opinion on it. It's just kind of mm-hmm. like cool. Game Pass is making Microsoft more money. The other thing, Soapy, next thing is, uh, so I hope I'm going to say this right. Project Athea. This is the video game um, that is being developed by, I want to say this is the next Kojima game um, that we're getting. Let's see. Um, Let's see here. I'm going to fuck this up. I know I am. It's Square Enix. So it's Square Enix. Um, it's debut. Athea is the debut title for the Japanese publisher's new luminous production studio. Um, a developer formed, uh, by members of final fantasy. What would that be? Final fantasy 15 team in 2018. Basically the news coming out is that the game, which is right now called project Athea. We don't know if this is going to be the actual game or not. This should be coming out in, I want to say two years is what they were kind of uh, predicting for it. But the big thing, Soapy, is PlayStation has confirmed that this game is going to have a two-year PS5 console exclusivity to it. So basically that means when the game comes out, it'll be just PS5 for two years. So Square Enix's PS5 and PC original IP project, Athea, um, won't release on Xbox Series X or S for at least two years. So it'll come out on PC and PlayStation, but it won't be on Xbox until two years after it releases. So be this is something that I saw, and I was like, I get why Sony would want this, but this is something to where for the developers of Project Athea, is this good? Is this a good thing to have a two-year exclusivity with PlayStation before it can go to Xbox? I mean, it's something if you know Sony wants to put a cap on how much the game will sell, mm-hmm. you know, they can, that, that's fine by other people. It's one of the things. Obviously, people are going to wait to play it. <clears throat> like it's one of those things that there's a lot of people you won't shake out, like won't shake to go to the other console to play a game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those things that obviously you're going to hurt your sales in the long term. We're obviously short term, like, oh, yeah, all the PlayStation people are going to buy it. Once it goes public, like there may be people who just completely forget about the game or they're like, fuck it. I'm not going to play it at all. I may as well just watch playthrough to where they just don't want to buy the game. Yeah, obviously, you know, it's up to them. Like, I don't have a problem with like one or two year exclusives. It's more or less just understand once it goes public for everybody, it's probably not going to sell as much as you probably want Mm -hmm. it to. Oh, who I mean, knows? especially after like two years, like how much momentum is this game um, going to have? And Project Athea was the one where I'm going to go ahead and pull it up really quick. So because Twitch chat's kind of saying which game is this? This was what we were shown six months ago. I want to say this was at the uh, the PS5, um, the the PS5 showcase. We were shown this. Um, this is Project Athea. Yet again, working title. Um, you and I, when it was shown, was like, huh, what's this kind of a game? 
Um, just kind of looks like a open world. Um, Wait, you watch this together? We did watch this together. Yeah. Well, damn, dude. Shows a little. I pay attention. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. No, now that I'm seeing gameplay, yep. <laughs> yeah. Like this is what it is. So for those of you who, and for me at the time, I was excited because I'm like, oh shit, like this looks fucking cool. Um, it looks fucking awesome. I can't wait to actually see it. But like, yeah, it's announced that this game is going to be uh, a PS5 exclusive for two years. We thought originally it was going to be just a PS5 game and like never come out on uh, the basically never come out on Xbox. But uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be PlayStation for two years, then Xbox. I think this is the beginning of like there's a part of me that goes if you're an xbox fan well at least i get to see it at some point my thought is is this may basically sony dipping the toes in the water of like we still want the exclusivity because we still want to say like hey you can play it first here but at the same time is it going to be effective to where how many xbox users buy it two years after the game comes out when it's like i can like because I feel like Xbox users are more likely to say, ah, I'll just fucking get it on computer. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things that if if you can get it on a computer, get it on a computer. Mm-hmm. It's basically most games that have like a year where they're only on one console. It's not worth the wait. Yeah. So <laughs> the next thing, this is uh, yet again, a 2021 game kind of discussion, but plus, uh, this is a game that is near and dear to your heart only because it's Xbox and Halo. Um, 343 confirms Halo Infinite won't release until late 2020. So what I'm thinking late 2020 means is fourth quarter. So basically the earliest we would see it is September. The latest you could see it is probably like the thing I'll ask you is, is there a chance Halo Infinite is the cyberpunk and Jedi fallen order of 2021 where by late, by late 2021. And I even, uh, the card is off because it's even changed. Um, could halo infinite be the one to where it's, yeah, we want to target August, but it doesn't come out until December. Therefore it's not in the game award game of the year category for 2021. Well, I mean, it's like I said last night mm-hmm. when we were talking about this. At least I think it was last night. Yeah. Halo is not going to be up there for game of the year. I'm saying it right now. It's it's not going to be the Cyberpunk or the Jedi Fallen Order. It's going to be the oh hey that game exists. Okay. Like it's not, and it's and it's not me being like oh it's going to be a bad game. Mm-hmm. Halo hasn't been nominated since Halo Two. So it doesn't surprise me it's not going to get nominated because... Should it worry fans that it's going to take until late 2021 to come out in that summer? No, no because they're polishing the game. Okay. They're making sure the game actually works. Good point. Like, this is one where we've talked about the reason why it's got pushed back was because of COVID. Um, 343 came out and said that. Um, in the statement here, it says after reach or after reach set shipped, I became a halo fan. This is, uh, let's see the person who is saying this from the article, Joseph Staten of Bungie. Um, I became a halo fan cheering on three, four, three, uh, from the sidelines, but I've spent the last four months immersing myself back into the halo universe. And it's my honor as creative director to help our team ship Halo Infinite in fall 2021. Uh, He added, yep, that's when the game is coming out. And from now until then, every one of us at 343 and our great great partner teams will be building, testing, and publishing, or polishing an experience we hope all of you to love. So, I mean, the short of it is earliest we could see this thing is August 2020, one latest we can see it is um, December 2021. I'm hoping for not a cyberpunk situation. I know cyberpunk is a little bit different because we first heard about that game two years ago in like 2018. And now we're just getting it. Whereas Halo, 
um, was supposed, I believe, it was supposed to come out this year, right, Soapy? It was supposed mm-hmm. to be done it supposed- already. It was supposed to be a launch title. Oh, that's right. It was supposed to be a launch title. So yeah, we should have already had it already, but it got delayed, and now it's going to be almost a full year uh, since that game uh, was announced for it to be in the hands of Xbox fans. Uh, real short one next is Prince Persia delayed Sands of Time remake. Uh, this sucks, obviously, because uh, I know from the Ubisoft, uh, what would they call it? A Ubisoft like uh, showcase or something. Uh, they had yeah. a different name for it. We saw this. I was pumped for it because obviously I love the original Prince of Persia Sands of Time. It looked like they were going to do some cool things with it, but like obviously they're delaying it. This is we live in the kind of season of delays with COVID and everything. So hopefully that doesn't hurt the game. It only helps the game um, for Prince of Persia. And then the last thing, oh, did it not give, it didn't do my last thing. So I'm going to put this graphic up really quick. Soapy, this is just for me. This is not even because of the game. This is just because this is one of my favorite characters. But if you are a Power Rangers battle for the grid player, which is the Power Rangers game that's kind of like a uh, beat em up Mortal Kombat style where you can fight one another and play as different Rangers, my favorite is Scorpina's in it. So it's like, it's one of those things where I might actually go out and play Battle for the Grid for the first time because when I was a kid, Scorpina, obviously one of my favorite characters, and the skin that they have is the one from the original Power Rangers. So if you are a Scorpina fan, shorty but a goody, you can go play as her in Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. That is going to do it for MVP Games Live. Soapy, I will ask you before we wrap up, any final thoughts on anything? No, that's really it. Well, that's going to do it for us here. Uh, remember, join the Discord, greatest community on the internet. Link down below or exclamation Discord into Twitch chat in order to do that. If you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids is how you go ahead and do that. Thank you to Pat Hill and Philly Sean, our Patreon sponsors. We are live on Twitch every Monday through Friday. No soapy. Wrong one. Not OnlyFans. We don't have an OnlyFans. No OFs here. Uh, unless Soapy wants to start one. Um, but still, we're on Twitch every Monday through Friday. Twitch.tv backslash MVP vids. We're also on YouTube at MVP Entertainment. Dave and I, for you guys on Twitch, we'll be coming up next with MVP Sports Live. For you guys checking out for Games Live, Soap and I will be back tomorrow. Same cat time, same cat channel. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.